Pursue your passion. Do something that makes your face light up with joy when you get to talk about it. For me, that passion has always been working with animals. I knew as much about cows four years ago as you do today. But I've learned so much from these gentle giants that I've decided to share their wisdom with you. I'll show you how they've taught me about passion, patience, misconceptions, and even how they've taught me about death. Now, I don't think the Watt Center would like me to bring a cow in here for you guys today, but I'll give you an idea of what one's like. Imagine a 1,500-pound, 5-foot-tall, giant puppy dog. I kid you not, as our class has gathered around our professor who's giving us a speech about the dairy, one of the cows waltzed right in the middle of our class looking to get a back scratch. Our professor didn't seem phased, reached out, patted her on the head, and introduced the class to Greta, the brown Swiss. From that day on, I knew we were going to be friends. I mean, who doesn't like a good back scratch? Greta taught me to find my passion. I knew that I wanted to work with animals, but small animals had always been my focus, because it's all that I knew. Greta opened up this whole new world of animal science, research, and animal medicine. She opened up so many doors that I would have, never would have thought to open myself. Just as Greta taught me to find my passion, find something or someone who helps you find your passion. Do something that makes you so excited to do it, it gets you out of bed without an alarm clock. Because if you find your passion, that's where you know your true self and what makes you eternally happy. I came to liking cows so much that I picked up a summer job milking cows at the dairy farm. My first shift was Wednesday at 2 a.m. of finals week. Never in my life has it been more difficult to get out of bed. I finally make it to the farm and meet up with our head milker, Lamar, who instructs me to go get the cows out of the pasture with the gator. I was so sleepy, it took me five minutes to figure out how to turn the gator on and another five to figure out how the headlights work. I finally make my way out to the pasture, almost running Lamar over in the process while avoiding this swarm of gnats coming at my face. The cows safely made it back to their pens, and I only managed to eat seven gnats. As I take the cows to the parlor, I'm amazed at how orchestrated the whole event was. A simple whistle, and all the cows meander their way to the parlor. They only know one speed, which is snail, but at least they know where they're going. This is where I met my next cow, named Olga. Olga taught me that stubbornness gets you nowhere, literally nowhere. She'll just stand there and not move. No matter how much you push against her, Newton's laws did not apply. She was always the first one in the parlor and the last one to leave. She thought that what she was doing was right. She thought that's how you're supposed to do it. And Olga's what we like to call chubby. So let's just say the other cows had quite a time trying to maneuver around her to get in the parlor. Well, I learned that not everything that you do or understand is right. I researched some animal science and animal agriculture as a whole. And while doing this research, I learned that a lot of people have these misconceptions about animal agriculture. A lot of people think that animals in agriculture are mistreated. But I'd like to tell you today that animals in agriculture are some of the most well-treated animals that I know. The focus of the dairy industry has always been to increase production, decrease costs, all while increasing cattle health and comfort. There's a symbiotic relationship between these things. Happy cows produce more milk. It's as simple as that. So when you're doing some research, make sure that you're doing it with a credible source. You know, someone working in the industry is probably going to know a little bit more than Sally on Facebook. So I did this research while working with the Dairy Science Club at Clemson. The Dairy Science Club introduced me to this whole new world of show cows. I came to liking shows so much that I joined the dairy show team. Picture a dog show and then replace the dogs with cows. My first show heifer was Daphne. It's a love-hate relationship between her and myself for quite a while. The first time Daphne let me touch her was a pretty eye-opening experience. There I am, reaching in. The second my finger touched her hide, she whipped her head around, looked me square in the face, and right to the leg. Man, did she kick the snot out of me. I had an epiphany the first day I tried to halter her. Here I am, chasing around this pasture, waving carrots in the air, trying to get her to eat them to get this halter over her face. Exhausted, I finally sit down in the pasture. I'm not out of shape, but you try chasing a cow around with muck boots and coveralls on. So she, as I'm sitting down on the grass, she walks right up to me and tries to lick the hat off my head, as if I'm this new mysterious thing in her life. I learned that I couldn't always go towards her. Sometimes you have to let them come to you. I learned about patience. 
Now Daphne's in the milking herd and walks up to me anytime I'm around. Patience paid off. Maybe it was the carrots. <laughs> Anyways, remember that not everything's easy. You have to be patient. And having that patience makes the end result so much more rewarding. Patience isn't about the weight itself, but it's about your attitude towards the weight. The last cow I want to talk to you guys today about is named Paisley. Paisley was a big goofball. She'd always come greet me at the gate every day, and she was always the last cow to leave the parlor because she wanted to be around us so much. One day, Paisley was in her pen, lying on her side with her legs stretched out. She did this in the pasture a lot, but it was odd to see her do it in the pen. So I approached slowly, thinking she's just taking an afternoon nap. The closer I got, the more evident it became. Paisley wasn't sleeping. I reached in to feel her face, and it was cold to the touch. I felt for a pulse to no avail. Paisley was gone. We just saw her less than two hours ago, eating at the feed bunk. Not knowing what had happened, we called the university veterinarian out to take a look. He performed a necropsy and concluded that she passed away due to polycerositis. She didn't show any outward physical signs of discomfort, pain, or illness, but judging by her pathology report, we knew that she was in pain and she just did a really good job of hiding it. I hate not seeing Paisley greet me at the gate every day, but I know that she's in a better place. This was my first encounter with death, and I learned an important lesson. Sometimes death isn't always something to be afraid of. In Paisley's case, death is an end to pain. There's a famous quote by Cicero that says, the life of the deceased is placed in the memory of the living. I'll never forget Paisley, not because of the way that she died, but because of how she lived. She always was making me smile and was always happy to see me. It's that which I'll remember, her benevolent spirit and her unconditional love. Do something that makes the memory of you so great. Remember that a job isn't always about the paycheck. A job is about Sorry. A job is about making like you, feeling like you make a difference, feeling like you matter. It's about having passion. Your passion might not be for dairy cows or agriculture as a whole. But overall, these cows have taught me some pretty important life lessons on passion, patience, and understanding. Being perceptive and allowing other people's opinions, but coming to your own conclusions by doing your own research on things. This helps us be better members of society and helps us look at our own life, our career, and our passion. I found my passion amongst a great group of young ladies who just happen to be dairy cows. Where will you find yours? Thanks, guys.